Hey guys, my name's Landon. Uh, today I want to do a quick tour of my homemade Overland camper. Um, it's sitting on my 2010 Toyota Tacoma. It's a TRD Sport model, not the off-road. I got rid of the hood scoop because no one likes the hood scoop. It's a 4 liter V6, 6 speed manual transmission, 4x4. Brief back story history of truck and me. Uh, my dad gave me this truck for my 20th birthday and when he gave it to me it was just bone stock. It had the factory Toyota rims with the paint peeling off the chrome stuff. Um, it, it was completely stock other than the fiberglass camper shell that was on the back of it. And I took that truck, I put new tires on it, um, put some different rims, but took it in that form just with the fiberglass camper shell on four different tours out west the shortest one being a two-week trip around utah and one of the reasons for that was i didn't have money to upgrade and build this the way i wanted to but the other great thing is you figure out really quick what you need what you don't need and what is what's worth spending money on so that was massive in coming to this conclusion of my personal overland rig um, so yeah took me about a year and a half of saving year and a half two years of saving and planning during that time frame um, i've had the truck for three and a half years now and it's just been a slow progressive build right up here to the end where i built the camper um, but just upgrading and changing things as i go so i'm going to start up the front up here and just work my way around the truck so first and foremost, obviously the truck's green. It started out as a Toyota metallic gray, um, but this is bed liner. It's the Raptor liner stuff, same as Line X, but they spray it in the back of pickup trucks. Um, I believe it's an epoxy paint, but it's got the texture and it just helps protect against rock chips, scree uh, tree branch scrapes and everything. Um, on the first four trips this truck took, especially down here with the quarter panels and everything, they were just completely basically sandblasted just trashed and scratches down the side so wanted something a little bit different went with that um starting with wheels and tires i've got the mickey thompson baja boss all terrain so it's 285 75 r16 tire and then just some pro cop bullet hole rims nothing fancy with the rims there uh, i'm running the icon stage five uh, suspension all the way around. It's got the billet upper control arms with the delta joints and then Dirt King fabrication lower control arms. Uh, still have the stock CV axles and everything. For front bumper and skid plate, I'm running the Coastal Off Road. This is a, this, it's their extreme high clearance bumper, but it's a weld kit. So you order this in and it comes just as plate steel on a pallet and you weld it together yourself. You have to cut out the front cross member and reinforce it, but that gives you a much better approach angle. Um, if you're looking for, if you can weld or have a buddy that can weld, it's a fantastic product and you can save a lot of money going this route. Got just some cheapo pod lights in there and then the Warren Evo 10,000 pound winch also. Um, got, a gift from my boss is that grill insert. It's kind of hard to read. It's dirty right now, but it's the Liberty Bell. It says Liberty or Death, 1776. It's got muskets crossed behind it on the American flag, so pretty awesome. Just some nothing fancy aftermarket headlights, and then I've got bushwhacker fender flares all the way around. Up top here, I have the Prinsu roof rack, um, just a storage box, and my little charcoal grill up there. I also have a cell booster antenna, the Wii Boost. I have 200 watts of solar coming in up top. All the electrical in this truck is Renogy. So two 100 panel Renogy panels up there. And I've also got my rooftop fan help give ventilation. Uh, should be it for the front. Just got my windows tinted. It's very nice. For the camper itself, it is an all aluminum design. It's an aluminum exoskeleton. So the only structure is on the outside edges, tops, bottoms. There's no, no vertical studs. 
this cuts down on weight, first and foremost, which is most important, thermal bridging, and cost. Um, so it's worked thus far, pretty solid design. All of my structure is two by two angle, eighth inch thick. The sheet metal is 0.05 aluminum. It's all held in with Sikaflex construction adhesive sealant and rivets spaced around. My corners are fully boxed, fully gusseted and everything. Um, and then the subframe is one by one aluminum tubing all the way across on there. We'll get back under the truck in a second. I do have a pass through. This is an accordion boot off of a semi truck. So if it's bad weather or, you know, if there's someone shady outside, I can crawl from the cab through to the back of the camper and it works really nice. Nice little feature there. One thing to keep in mind as I'm showing y'all this stuff, um, I am five foot six, five foot seven with my boots on, uh, about 135 pounds. So this is a very unique design. It's a very special camper. Um, not a lot of people would be comfortable living in it full time. I'm living in it full time now, been in it for three weeks um, and I've loved every minute so far. I do have a window unit AC in here, just a little 5,000 BTU. So this is where it vents hot air out. It pull, pulls uh, fresh air, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a vent right here, pulls clean air from the cab. I have an ammo can, one of the Fat 50 ammo cans mounted. I've just got my tire chains and stuff in there. And then I've got shore power plugged in. I can run the AC off of battery power for about four and a half, five hours or I can run it indefinitely off of shore power. So that's a nice option to have. As far as the mounts for the camper goes, um, obviously the aluminum would fatigue much faster than the steel and it would start cracking and breaking if it was hard mounted to the frame. So I've got these 900 pound uh, rubber bushings mounted to the aluminum subframe. And then these are 50 pounds per inch springs and they flex around it, it moves the whole camper kind of floats over the frame um, but this allows the frame to twist and flex and the camper itself to move independently um, so yeah and I can tighten that more or whatever is needed again I've got the icon stage 5 bypass shocks back here and this truck is sitting on airbags they are important but they're also not carrying a ton of weight. I think there's like 15, 20 PSI in those airbags right now. So most of the weight is just on the leaf springs. It's not a super heavy camper to begin with. And then there's my other front mount for the camper, all custom brackets, welded and made all that myself. And that's the condensing line for my AC it drips out down there. And one other thing, if y'all have ever looked at Tacoma's in depth, um, these are not the factory leaf hangers at all. So it was actually on this side, the rear passenger leaf hanger. Um, I was in Utah and I backed up into a rock ledge and completely bent this rear hanger in. Um, the factory hanger is a, I don't know what the technical term is, but a shackle up design. So there's this big bracket that comes down from the frame and then your actual leaf shackle here is going up to the leaf pack. And I bent that whole thing forward. And by the time I got back home to Tennessee, the outside edge of this tire was wore down. So I guess my whole axle had kicked at an angle. So I was gonna replace those, but I got to looking at my brother's Jeep and some of our old military vehicles on my family farm. And they all have this design. So it's like, hey, that's much cheaper, much easier. And it gives me more ground clearance. I did go with the Bay Area Metal Fab Heavy uh, leaf shackles there so that is an upgrade and then while i was at it i went ahead and made custom brackets for the front um, again if you've worked on toyotas you know the leaf springs and the just different heavy brackets that go to the frame they're not fully welded they're pinned and that's just the prime location for salt and water and mud and everything else corrosive to build up and it just eats through that and this truck had spent three years in um Michigan. So there is a little bit of rust on it. So I just went ahead, cut those out and made my own setup. So working around to the back of the camper, let me shut this right quick so y'all can 
see what it looks like closed and get a preview of what it's like open, I guess. So I've got some really cool retro style tail lights. I'm very pleased with that. Um, gives it a very unique design. Again, the rear bumper is coastal off-road. It's a DIY kit. Just comes as plate metal. It's all three front and rear bumper. It's 3 16 plate steel that I welded together and it's all powder coated. The bumper itself is made for the second gen Tacoma, but then they have a universal swing arm kit and that swing arm kit just welded to the face of the bumper. So I didn't like that because it stuck out the full two inch width of this tubing. So recessed some angle in here, made some custom hinges and just customized it, made it a little bit cooler. But yeah, full size spare, matching rim. We've got 10 gallons of extra fuel there. Another little ammo can just for some odds and ends stuff. Tail lights, got my top brake light. This is the Overland Vehicle Systems 270 degree awning. It is a freestanding awning for the sun. Um, I had it down last night. Anytime I leave it up overnight, I put the legs down and the braces out just in case the wind picks up or, you know, it starts to rain. But this is a game changer. It's not the most expensive awning out there, but it's pretty awesome. Highly recommend it. I have exterior lights on the back and the side here just for camping. Makes it very nice and then retained the factory fuel fill. And that should be about it for the outside. So y'all saw before, pull these pins. This swings open out of the way. I've got my funnel for my fuel cans and a little wrench there. Got exterior 110 plugs just for the whatever, whatever I might need them for. Got outside water here as well. And I was pretty pleased about this. This was a prefabbed ladder that would pull out to there, but then I modified it again and added the additional slides so it comes down and does not mess up the finish on my bumper. I've not had any trouble with that. So this is the turn uh, overland door. It's their Wildlands small door. Um, it's a two piece. So it's got the built-in screen door here. It's very nice and it gives you a nice place to keep all your stickers because everyone loves stickers. And then I got to clip this on here right quick, one-handed. Just pretend like that didn't happen. And it's also got the double deadbolt, so it's a pretty nice secure door. Coming inside here, um, to start out with electrical in this panel here in the floor, I have 200 amp hours of lithium batteries. That's 52 pounds of batteries and also space I didn't want to keep inside the camper. So for the sake of space and center of gravity, I made this box down here. Um, fits right there in between the frame rails. I've had the truck completely flexed out and it does not hit. That is the exhaust for my Webasto gasoline heater since we're down here. But yeah, I was very pleased with that. Worked out quite nicely. Just miscellaneous quick grab storage stuff on each side. This is my mudroom. Um, anyone who's ever hiked in a snowy, wet, muddy, or even just dusty area, which can be anywhere, you know, keeping your vehicle and your camper in particular clean is very important. So I call that my mudroom. I put all my hiking stuff in there. Um, and I've also got hooks up here so I can put hangers up there and let anything wet drip down into the bucket, either while I'm driving or sleeping and let it dry out. Got my Dometic 50 liter mini fridge, just all kinds of storage up here. All of these on magnet keeps, just silverware, snacks, and various different items up here in the camper obviously i've got my bed platform another little fan hat rack just storage everywhere you can put storage just shove stuff everywhere got my reading light this gives you another look at the pass through the back seat's just the catch-all for my tools and sleeping bag i've got this blackout curtain that can roll down um 
keeps the light out, keeps the heat out at certain times. It just gives you some privacy. Here underneath the bed, I've got just a bunch of backpacking equipment and maps and stuff, as well as all my clothing just sectioned off down there. And then underneath this section is where that Webasto gasoline furnace is. That's the air out and it sucks air through here, through a vent. Um, way more heat than this truck camper will ever need, but I have it just in case. Um, additional just pantry storage. That's pretty much all that is, it's just food there. Um, pots and pans in here. And it's all just cabinet, uh, just plywood cabinets, just quick and simple. That's my AC unit, saw it from the outside. Got my little control station. 12 volt and 110 power. This is the thermostat for the Webasto heater and then just an indoor outdoor thermometer. More just food and whatever. Um, I do have 10 gallons of fresh water on board and I can either use this in interior faucet or the outside faucet. I do not have a sink because I did not want to deal with the gray water system. Um, or just the sink basin here. So I've got a little collapsible basin that I use and it works quite nicely for me. 99% of the time I'm cooking outside anyway. So that's what I prefer to do. This is my utility cabinet. Um, so this is all my electrical stuff. I've got my water pump back there. Just random storage. That's my cell booster. That's the 12 volt fuse block, distributor block, whatever you want to call it. It's where all my small stuff ties into the main power. That is my 20 amp charge controller for the solar panels. And I've got my DC DC battery charger. So anytime the truck is running, regardless of what the weather is doing, I've got 20 amps coming in to charge the battery. And that tops it off very, very quickly. If I do any amount of driving during the day, that gets me to 100%. And I've also got my 1000 watt inverter, um, which allows me to run an air fryer, my AC unit, or anything up to 1000 watts that needs 110 power. Has a peak of 1400 watts. And then I've got my main battery shut off right there. So if something were to go wrong, I just cut it, cut it off right there. Um, and then this is just my water. We've got two military five gallon water jugs in there. Um, they're on individual valves. I can turn one off so I know when I'm halfway empty. I went with the water jugs like that versus uh, outside tank. Um, one, every all my water's inside so it won't freeze. I can keep an eye on that, makes it nice and easy. And two, I can actually take those and, you know, at a state park or national park or even a lot of truck stops, I can fill up with water versus trying to find an RV fill station. So it makes it a lot nicer. Um, and yeah, rooftop fan up there. If I didn't mention that. So that's the quick overview of the inside of the camper. There. I wanted to answer some of the most common questions I've gotten so far. Um, First one that I get at every single gas station is, yes, I did build this whole camper um, with the exception of the exterior paint. Had a guy there local in Tennessee paint the outside with the Raptor liner. Past that, I built, fabricated, welded, built, installed, um, everything else. Had some help from friends, but the majority of it all um, I did and my boss's shop. He was very, very gracious. Let me use his shop. Um, second question that all the grandparents ask is, where do I shower? Where do I use the bathroom? For bathroom, I'm a young man. It's pretty quick and easy. I'm either close enough or far enough away that it's not a problem. So if I'm out here in the national forest, you know, you just go take care of business. Not a, not an issue at all. Or if I'm staying at a truck stop or traveling from point to point, you stay in a Walmart parking lot or somewhere, you just, it's an inconvenience sometimes, but you go inside, use the bathroom. Um, if you have to go number two, for me, I've got a pee bottle. So if I'm in a public area and I don't wanna leave the camper in the middle of the night, just use the pee bottle. Quick, easy, pour it out in the morning. 
So that's my bathroom situation. I didn't want to deal with the black water tank. Didn't want to deal with the toilet. Um, number one, didn't want to empty it. Space, weight, just not worth it for me. Uh, for showers, I do have a solar shower, but that takes up a lot of water. So you have to carry a lot of weight and water. Um, if I'm someplace where I can quickly and easily refill, I'll use that. It works just fine. But there's a lot of shower options, especially out west. Um, at truck stops, travel centers, you can get showers for $12 to $17. And those are always really, really clean, really nice. But they're pretty pricey so that's not a frequent stop that I make um, a lot of campgrounds at state parks and national parks are coin operated you don't have to reserve a campground to use those so that's my preferred option for two to three or four dollars you can get a shower just a five minute shower that's all I need um, and then the same thing with some laundry mats there's a lot of, been through several laundry mats that have coin operated showers so they're not difficult to find once you know where to look. Um, I've also been asked, why did I not put a canvas pop top or just make it bigger overall? As for the canvas pop top, it adds a lot of complexity. It adds a 100% chance that eventually it is going to leak. It's inevitable, it's canvas. It's gonna, you know, UV radiation, it's gonna get bleached, it's gonna fatigue, it's gonna leak at some point. Um, on top of that, this truck camper is specifically built to go to Alaska. It's, in, I, don't, I don't think I said this previously, but it's inch and a half high density foam with two layers of mylar reflectix in between, um, which I believe brings my R value to like 13 something plus the sheet metal plus the half inch uh, plywood. And I've got a 16,000 BTU heater, so I've got more heat than I could possibly need, even at, you know, negative 25, negative 30, which is what I expect this truck to see. So if I put a canvas pop top on that, that, you know, there goes all your R value. You have zero ability to retain heat. You're just back to winter camping in a tent. Um, I've camped in Yellowstone at negative 15. Didn't care to do that again, not without a heater and proper insulation. Um, so yeah, as far as size goes, I had the Toyota Tacoma, like I said, dad gave it to me. I did not want to put it on a bigger half ton or even three quarter ton pickup. The Tacomas are narrow and they're relatively short and going down the forest roads and just these back side by side trails. I've had this thing down a number of, you know, side by side trails. And if the mirrors on the truck fit, it'll fit, the camper will fit through that gap. And it's only about nine and a half inches taller than the top of the cab. So you just keep that in mind. And really if the cab of the truck fits, this camper is gonna fit through there. So that's part of the reason it's not any bigger than it is. It's plenty big enough for me, for one person. Um, it's 44 inches floor to ceiling. That height was determined by my stature. Um, Cause I can stand up fully straight legged and I can pull on a pair of pants at 44 inches and I still have several inches of clearance here. Um, for those who've tent camped or camped in just a normal fiberglass camper shell, you know, you have to lay on your back and do the worm in order to pull on a pair of pants. So that was actually an important measurement for me. Again, I'm five foot six, so at 66 inches tall, I've got 74 and a quarter inches lengthwise on my bed platform. So more than enough space there. My bed platform, I believe is 25 inches wide. My shoulders are 19 inches wide. That's being a little generous. Um, so plenty of space. I'm up on the balls of my feet right now, teetering around. You know, I can go down on my knees and work here, do whatever. And sit perfectly flat and got even more room, so. It's not an issue for me whatsoever. Um, and I've had quite a few people ask me price point uh, about this camper. Obviously it was stretched out, especially the exterior mods um, that was stretched out over a good, good bit of time, a year, year and a half. Um, for the camper itself, 
I saved a lot of money all the way around because like I said, I built or installed everything myself. But for the camper itself, I'm right at $18,000, $19,000 for the camper. Aluminum's expensive. I've got a lot of electrical components in here that adds up very, very quickly. Um, and I didn't, I didn't cut corners. I didn't spare many expenses as far as quality components goes. Because again, you're out here remote living. Um, this is my home. I'm living out of it full time. Um, it was worth it. So truck's completely paid off. Don't have to worry about that. Just living off of savings right now, having a good time. So yeah, if y'all have any specific questions about me or the truck camper, how things are done, um, leave a comment down below and I can do a Q&A or just a high detail video. Um, past that, thanks for watching.